aging because genetic and environmental factors including diet and lifestyle contribute to cardiovascular cancer and whatever you think you know about it I didn't make it very clear when I took on the gentleman that was going blind with pigmentary glaucoma because I had already treated successfully his father's bladder cancer he later called me with a child whose entire lung was filled with a heart that was failing and the child was 18 months and they said they had to do an emergency heart transplant and I was between trips just had come back from China and it was just on the way to go to, to Europe and I was in the airport and I handled that case and we proved that they were lying the Children's Hospital of St. Louis with a child that's blue and the heart's filling in whole lung. You guys know how to treat that, don't you? Nutrition had nothing to do with hormones. I didn't give growth. I told you I would use growth hormone for a heart that's failing in a dog. This is a child. So what was the child's problem? I, as a former radiologist, can sit there and beat these guys up because an old x-ray is worth what? A million dollars. So I say to the family, did your child ever have an x-ray before? Yeah. Six months ago, she had a bad cold. They took an x-ray. I said, get that x-ray. And I'm doing this remotely. Remember, I'm in California. The child's in St. Louis. I have her bring the x-ray up to the x-ray department. I get the chief radiologist on the phone. I say, I'm a radiologist. This is a friend of mine, blah, blah. Put the two x-rays up. He says, Dr. Gordon, there's almost no change. Well, if six months ago the heart was massively enlarged, and it's still massively enlarged, would you think that we need a heart transplant, or do you think the diagnosis could be genetic? I mean, if it was a cause for emergency, they were telling the patient, this is a, the child's going to be dead in days, an acute problem. They were lying. So I asked them over the phone. I said to the doctor in charge, have you measured carnitine? No. Have you measured coenzyme Q? No. Have you measured magnesium? No. So I know they're totally incompetent. They just want to sell a quarter of a million dollar heart transplant and have the child pay $50,000 a year the rest of its life to be on immune suppressive. That's, that's the decision that's being made. So I overnight to the hospital, nutrients. What kind of nutrients do you think I saved that child's life with? What kind of nutrients? Carnitine, coenzyme Q, vitamin C, magnesium, garlic. This isn't very complicated, folks. And then what do we have? We have a private healing ceremony in the intensive care ward in Children's Hospital in St. Louis. And we tell the nurses, this is a prayer thing. No one's allowed in the room. I do this all the time. So under the tongue of the child, child pretty sick, we put coenzyme, we put carnitine, we put magnesium, I put some, okay, and in hours the pulse is down from 180 and the blue color is gone, so it suggests that I might be right. Now the hospital is not real happy because they've just lost a quarter of a million, right? So they don't look at me as a friend. And so I get the other children's hospital in St. Louis because I have to go on to another meeting so I get them to agree to follow the child because I want to do some more scans, ultrasounds of the heart to make sure the heart keeps coming down. Do you think either hospital ever asked me what the hell I was doing? They don't want to know. And so it's just a no, but they did call the state of Arizona to find out how come Dr. Gordon thinks he can practice on patients in Missouri. And in St. Louis, we can't have Dr. Gordon practicing that far apart. So anyhow. So this biochemical individuality, high-dose vitamin therapy stimulates enzymes. This is the whole work of Bruce Ames. Bruce Ames is kind of my hero now. He's the University of California, Berkeley, and he's proven that everything I've been doing is real. I didn't have all this stuff back then. We were just saving lives. Now it's all published. This article exonerates everything I've done for 40 years, and none of you have ever heard of it, I'm sure, because it's not of that much interest to you, to know what can you really do if you really knew nutrition, really no nutrition. Our analysis of metabolic disease that affects cofactor binding as a result of polymorphics. In other words, I'm telling you, it's nice to know the genes, then you're going to have to learn the nutrition and learn how to overcome the genes, right? There's a lot of information to learn here. Feeding high dose of vitamin raises the tissue cofactor, increases the activity of the defective enzyme. I have a lot of defective enzymes, therefore I don't resent the fact that I live on a lot of supplements because I know without it I can't function as I now have become accustomed to functioning. Environment over genetics. Functional and gets into the whole story. <coughs> Finally disease, death. See, health is the choice. Genes environment, that's you in the middle. That's the phenotype. 
And this is gene environment fact sheet. All human disease is the interaction of genes and modifiable. Modifiable. You notice that word? The environment's modifiable. Variations in medical associated with disease, gene do not cause disease, influence the person's system. Okay, you guys know all this by now. Our genes are not a destiny. It's true we can't alter the expression of our eye color, but we can stop the expression of our BRCA1. We don't have to have the breast cancer. It's incredible to have all those gastric carcinomas in Japan. has a lot of gastric carcinoma. None of our patients decided to die. Amazing. They still have the disease, believe me. If we start taking their stomachs out, there's some cancers, micro. It's, okay, it's going to lock again. Okay, well, that's it. It, it was not intended to go further than that. So we're going to go back. You were the next one on the questions. Okay, we're talking now, and he happens to come from Indonesia, and he's got a child with autism who on the hair test shows mercury and probably one other heavy metal. What should we do? First of all, remember, I've written books on autism, and <coughs> they are available on, by contacting through my website, and I type a lot about autism, so remember always to know everything I say Go to Gordon Research, you've got my card, put search, where it says search, put in the word autism, then go and join the professional group of other doctors and put in search and put in the word autism. Everything's going to spell out, much more than you can read in several hours. Across the board, what we had to teach people is that a lot of people want it to be simple, just the mercury, get the mercury out and the kid's going to be fine. That will not be true. The success that we've had, and we took on the ones that Harvard would admit. The Harvard Medical School, head of neurology, a woman, was on public broadcasting two weeks ago. And she says, we do very well on autism, excepting for about 30 or 40% of the cases we can't help at all. So all I ever saw was the ones that they couldn't help, because I'm in the cash market, and by the time they come to see me, they've failed all of their therapy. What do I mean by fail? I could tell you about a Chinese board-certified internist practice in San Francisco. She cannot go into the room with her nine-year-old son because she has to be in full body armor, because he will bite through anything she can wear. So I don't have simple cases. Fecal smearing, the cases we have, nobody helps. So. When we start helping these children, we have to start first by getting them off all wheat and all dairy. We have to recognize that they have huge ulcerations in their intestinal tract, significant inflammation of all tissues in their brain. And until I had this new thing, I didn't have an easy answer <coughs> because as an expert, at alternative medicine, I know infections are the hardest thing to treat. And I have said here that I love ultraviolet blood therapy, and I'm an expert at doing it, and I combine it with ozone, and I can drop the titer in hepatitis C or HIV by 90, 95% within three to four treatments. So if I can do that to a child, it's good. But you don't know how to do it. And you'd have to come to Phoenix, Arizona, to be trained to know exactly how to do it, and it takes time. In a child, it's hard to get an, a vein on a child, take blood out, treat it, and put it back in. So I need a way to overcome the infection, because until I overcome the infection, you're not going to get much of the metals. You've seen that the zeolite is an easy answer, and we're doing a study at the University of Phoenix, uh, right in the University of Arizona. Jim Adams is doing a study on zeolite and autism. They don't happen to have this nano-sized one, so their results won't be as dramatic, but they're going to help any child. I was in Sacramento, California. I was the doctor that saved several teachers from giving up the teaching profession because if they were lucky enough to get the parent to bring the child to me, the child that was the worst squirming, tearing the building apart in the back, would wind up in four months in the front row interacting with the teacher because it was always the simple game.